Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about lesbians and the doctrine of adoption. Okay, so I, like anybody else who's paying attention, I guess, ran across this article or heard people talk about this article where these two ladies, oh, over here, this way, these two ladies are upset because they went and did IVF and got the wrong gendered baby. They got a boy instead, right? So I'm going to read this a little bit. It says, the doctor, whose name was not shared, asked the couple, wait, do you know the sex of the baby gender? We're having a girl, Heather replied. It's very important to me to have a girl, she added. But the couple were horrified to discover that they were actually having a boy with Heather since saying, wow, with Heather since learning she had a male fetus inside her was just like rape. Okay. So the first time I heard about this, like, okay, crazy's being crazy. Obviously having a baby inside you is not like rape. It's nothing like rape. Um, <clears throat> and the gender of the baby shouldn't matter. I also found another one when looking for this again, because you know, as most things, it's, this just sort of poofed and then left make sure this is the right one here I think it is yeah okay so I found another one a white lesbian couple is suing a sperm bank for a second time because it gave them sperm from a black donor instead of a white one as they requested Jennifer Cramblett filed the lawsuit last week against Midwest Sperm Bank and this is actually in 2016 so this is an older article <clears throat> which she blames for an unplanned transracial parent-child relationship that she says has caused her to move to a place that is more racially and culturally diverse. It made her move. It shouldn't have made her move. The complaint says that she gave birth to a beautiful, obviously mixed race baby girl in 2012 after she le learned several months beforehand that the sperm was from a black donor. Claiming negligence, misconduct, breach of contract, she's seeking that much money. According to the complaint, Cramblet is now facing numerous challenges and external pressures associated with an unplanned transracial parent-child relationship, for which she is not and was not and is not prepared. Uh, okay. So, after hearing this, I was basically like, okay, nuts being nuts. Who cares what the gender, who cares what the skin color of this baby is, as long as the baby, well, even who cares how healthy it is. You want a healthy baby. But you shouldn't care at all about like the skin color and all that stuff. So I started thinking about, well, why do I have that thought process? Why do they have this thought process and I have a different one, right? So in Christianity, there is something called the doctrine of adoption. And basically, you see it over here. Adoption is the admission of a believer into the family of God, right? We believe that we were adopted by God, um, and that's put several different ways. We are um, grafted onto the vine, adopted as sons, and so sons truly, you know, things like that. This has a good outline of it right here. Um, we obtain sonship through the Holy Spirit, placing us in the family of God. Oh, adoption is through faith. So we obtain it through the Holy Spirit. That is like having, we obtain it through having uh, the same mindset. Adoption is through faith, is through shared uh, culture. We become joint heirs with Christ. You become someone who can, um, this is someone I can now pass things down to. The Holy Spirit testifies to our adoption. Parents stand up and say, that's my child. Our inheritance is incorruptible. Um, it never goes away. Once you're adopted, it never goes away. Gentiles are also adopted through the gospel. So the belief of the same, having the same belief system, right? So when you look through this, nothing in here says anything about their skin color or their gender. When you look at what the Bible says about adoption, it says that once you adopt someone into your family, there is no step. There is no, um, any of that. None of that does not exist in a biblical mindset. Once someone is adopted, they are your brother or sister. They are your son or daughter. They are someone you pass things down to, knowledge and, you know, physical things. They 
You're to teach them the gospel. All right. So you have at least shared knowledge of the same. Um, oh my gosh. I can't think of the word. And I just used it. <laughs> they have the shared knowledge of the same values. Basically, um, you are to call them your son or your daughter. You do not call them. This is my adopted son or she's adopted or he's adopted. It's not a conversation that you have unless, you know, you need to for medical or something. It's not something you say. This is my son. This is my daughter. I am their parent, not, not like their guardian. I'm their parent. Okay. When someone is adopted and let's say your parents are still alive, they have grandparents now. <laughs> if you have a brother, they have an uncle now. And it's immediate. It is you do, you do not refer to this person as an adopted person. They are your son or your daughter. And it's from just you accepting them into your family. All right. So <clears throat> this, uh, the reason why you don't see a bunch of Christians, you know, you don't see a bunch of stories of Christians saying, well, this person doesn't do this, so we can't, you know, so we are upset about it. The reason why you don't see that is because we don't care about your skin color. They, we don't care about your gender per se. <clears throat> when it comes to adopting someone, all we care about is that now you're ours. You're, our, you're in our family. You're, in, you're part of us now. And that's where you belong with us. Okay. I have been approached. I have not only approached people, but I have been approached before and taking, you know, can you take these kids? Yes, I can, but I must have the parental rights. They, the people who are giving up these kids must give up their parental rights and give them to me because once they're mine, they're mine. You know what I'm saying? They're, they are now my son or daughter, whatever it is they need, I will provide for them as you know, through God, but they're not going to go back and forth. They're not going to do those things. They're mine now. Okay. And I am their mother. You know, my husband is their father and now we care for them. So this sort of thing where it is a permanence that, that goes throughout this person's life. That's what people need. They need this permanent family structure. This, this, I belong here. Okay. Or else they will go out and try to belong somewhere else. And I've experienced this in myself where my family is broken. So as I get older, I try to think to myself, where do I belong? You know, my husband's family doesn't like me all that much. They can get along with me, but they're, they're, they're not like, they don't love me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, my own family is broken. Where do I belong? Not, uh, you know, I belong to God. I've been grafted into his family and that's where I belong. Okay. He's given me some great friends who are like family. All right. But without that, when you don't have that family, that physical family, that blood family. Okay. And it's, uh, and it's not together the way it should be with mom and dad. And, you know, we, uh, we can always go back to mom and dad's house or whatever. When you don't have that that creates a type of insecurity inside you. Okay. And I can say that I've gotten over that with God, with Christ, knowing that I always have a place I belong in Christ. Um, but if you don't have that, then that insecurity will just grow because as you get older, you want it more. So this is what I'm saying is like these women, these children are going to grow up and find out, oh yeah, they weren't happy about having me. They didn't really want me. They wanted somebody else and they were so upset about it that they sued people. Like I can get breach of contract and all that stuff. But when you're talking about a human being and what, you know, how this human being came in, I don't particularly really even care how they got here. They're here now, accept them, love them, be happy. You know what I mean? Adopt them into your life. And I've always said to people, if you don't want your child, if you don't think you can care for your child, anybody who's pregnant and they, they've told me, you know, I'm thinking about an abortion. 
I will take your kid. Send your kid to me. I will take them and they will be mine. I will adopt them in this way. That will be my child. I will be their mother, my husband, their father. It is, it is never a question for good. The, any, any Christian people I've really ever spoken to, it is never a question. If you don't want your child, hand it to them. They will take their kid. They have eight kids. They'll take another one. You understand what I'm saying? Like this is a, this is ingrained part of what we believe. And so you're never going to see somebody be like, well, I got a kid, but they were black or, well, I got a kid and you know, they were a girl or a boy or, or Asian or white or whatever that, that, that is not a thing inside Christianity. Okay. So I encourage you guys to write these down, pause, read these, take a minute to think about this. There's a, the place, there's a place in the old Testament that talks about when you adopt, you no longer call that person an adopted person. They are your son or daughter. And I have not, I found it one time and I have never been able to find it again. <laughs> so maybe I'll find it after this. If I do, I'll put it in the comments so you guys can see it, but think, just think about that. Okay. How does that free you up to adopt people? How does that free you up to just not even there's, there's no qualifiers. There's no anything. It's just, that is my son. When I talk to my, my husband about his parents, I say mom and dad because they're my mom and dad. Now I'm married into this family. So just something to think about guys. When, whenever you see these crazy things, it's good to know why you think the opposite. Okay. It's always good to know why and what you believe. All right. So I hope you guys have a great day. Remember to pray, read your Bible and consider, you know, and apply what God says to your life. Okay. You'll find that life is a lot easier whenever you do that. All right. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Bye.